All right, so welcome back. We're going to quickly talk about some more Venn diagrams, just the different types you can have, and then we're going to look at a, a question um, where we start using probability with Venn diagrams. So first of all, in the last video, this is the sort of Venn diagram we have, where you have a dot beside each number, and so that dot means that, say, the number 1 is in the set of A. Okay, so that's just an important distinction. So that means A is the set of 1 and 2. It's kind of a terrible squiggly bracket, but... Uh, 2 or B is the set of 2 and 3 and then U up here has four different items in it as 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay, so that's important just to know for this and now for this one here it's a little bit different. So in this case this 1, 2, 3 and 4 they don't have the dots beside it so they're very different from this one here. So what this means is the cardinal number of A is 3. It means there's one item in this bit of A and there's one item in this bit of A. We don't know what those items are, it's just the, the number of items. The same way that the cardinal number of B in this case is five, so five items in the set of B, um, and then all together U is equal to 10. So it's one plus two plus three plus four is gonna be equal to 10. Okay, so that's just an important distinction and um, that they're very different, so just be careful if the dots are there or not. And the last one is this one here, so in this case, um, it's the probability of A and the probability of B. So it's not the amount of uh, things that are in it or it's not the name of the different things that are in it. It's the probability of, say, choosing something from A. So in this case, U is equal to one because all the probabilities always have to add up to one. And in this case, say, for example, the probability of A is equal to 0 0.6. This is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4. Probability of B is equal to 0 0.7. And then, I don't know, for example, the probability of A and B, or intersect B, is equal to 0 0.4. Yeah, and then 0 0.1 is on the outside. So just the difference between those three types, and um, because it is important if they give you one of them, you have to make sure you don't get confused. But anyway, I'll go on to uh, an example question now, so we can start to use this. So the questions are normally pretty similar to this. They're pretty boring. Um, they just give you, so I'll read it out, I guess. In a class, there are 10 students, so that's U is equal to 10 in the universe. Um, there are two subjects to choose from, subject A and subject B. Uh, and six students do subject A, five do subject B. Two students do both subjects, and one student does neither of the subjects. Um, and then they ask you just to draw a Venn diagram, find out different probabilities, and fill it in. So this is kind of as boring as the examples get. Um, but the leading search questions aren't too different. So we will start by, yeah, we'll just start by answering the question. So if a student is chosen at random, what is the probability that they do subject A? So we'll start that down here. We'll say that's gonna be P of A, the probability of choosing someone who's doing subject A, and that's gonna be the number of students who do subject A, which is six, divided by all possible students, which is 10. So that's gonna give us 0 0.6, okay? Then we'll do uh, the number of students who are doing subject B, so it's part two, P of B. Uh, and in this case, it's just gonna be five over 10, the number of students who are doing subject B over um, all possible students, and it's gonna be 0 0.5. I'll go green, just draw a line here, um, and we'll do part three over on this side. Uh, so the number of students who do subject A or subject B. Okay, so this is an interesting one. Um, and so the easiest way to solve this one here is by drawing a Venn diagram. So I'll just try and get one here. Um, one second. So sorry, ignore the numbers that were just on it. So subject A or subject B. Um, it's interesting so that this, this means anything that's going to be in A or B. So anything in the shaded region I have done there. Okay, and we should know that the, sh the shaded region is get rid of that squiggle, is gonna be A union B, okay? So we need to find out everything that's in A union B, uh, and then we can find out the probability that they do subject A or B. So try to remember that, that or is the same thing as union, okay? So if I'm gonna fill this in, uh, we should always start from the middle. So we know the two students do both subjects, A and B, so I'm gonna fill that in here, that's gonna be two. Um, and then also one student doesn't do either. And then we can fill in these A and B bits. So it says five students do B, but we shouldn't do, we shouldn't stick a five in here. We should put three, because there's already two in the 
the entire circle of B. So 2 plus 3 is 5. And the same goes for here. This should be 4. Okay. So that means if we want to get, so A union B, if we want to get P of A union B, so the probability of A or B, um, then that's going to be 4 plus 2 plus 3. So everything that's inside A and B. Um, 4 plus 2 plus 3, all divided by everything. So it's the same, it's the same as all of these, um, which in this case is just going to be 10. So that means P of A UB is equal to 0 0.9, or 9 over 10. Uh, and then the last one, part 4, I'll just do it in purple. Uh, subject A and subject B. Uh, so in this case, subject A and subject B is the same thing as intersect. So going to bear that in mind, uh, that and can be the same as intersect sometimes. Uh, and then in this case, P of A and B is equal to 2 over 10, because it's 2 in the gap and there's 10 altogether, which is equal to 0 0.2. Um, so that's just a quick example using a Venn diagram to help with the probability question. The first few you could actually do without it, but it's definitely much easier to use a Venn diagram to figure out these last two ones. Um, so sorry, they sort of are squishing in each other. That's the bottom one, and that's part three. Um, but yeah, that's all you'll need to know really for the Leaving Cert for Venn diagrams. In the next videos, we're going to start looking at the different probability rules that you have to know. Um, but hope this helped. Um, if it did, then like and share with your friends, and I'll see you in the next one.